Here's a video that I've delayed for some time now. And the reason for this is because I like to be more specific when it comes to logos. And for me, it just made it hard because when you mention logos or banners, it's quite of a large subject. So you need to know what you're going to base it on. But for today's video, we're going to base it on a gym logo. So I'm going to show you how to create a professional, clean gym logo. What you want to do is you want to open up Photoshop and then go to File and New. We're going to get ourselves a new project and in that project we're going to set it to 1080 times 1080. Next up you want to set the resolution to 75, we don't need 300. We're going to put it on RGB color, keep it on 8-bit and then have it on transparent. Once you've done that, go ahead and press Create. And we're going to start off with the background, so you want to get yourself a solid color. You can either get yourself a black color or a white color. Black and white is usually the easiest colors to work with. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to create a basic logo, but you can add some colors if you want to. Now that we've got ourselves a background, you want to make sure you have your ruler selected. To get a ruler, all you got to do is press Ctrl and R, and this will toggle it on and off. If you can't do it this way, don't worry about it. You can go to view and then you can get yourself a ruler, which is right here. Now that you've got yourself the ruler, the next thing to do is where the numbers are, you can left click and then drag a line, which will be the Y axis. And then you want to pretty much go down until it snaps onto the center. So as you can see, as we slowly go down, it is snapped onto there. And that is where the center of this image is. Once again, you want to get yourself a X axis and set this one to center. So as you can see, it's snapping on once it reaches center. So the next step is to go to the shape tool down here. You can either go down here or you can press U on your keyboard and that will bring it up for you. That will get you the shape tool. You can right click on it and get yourself a polygon tool. Once you've selected it, you want to go to the top where it says sides and then set this one to eight. Once you've set the sides, you also want to go down and select a color. So we're gonna go with a black and then you also want to go to where it says shape right at the top. You want to make sure that the fill is on none, so completely take it off and go to stroke and set this one to a color. Make sure it's got a pretty good size, so about 25 pixels will be good and keep it on a normal straight line. Now this is the easy part. The reason why we created the lines right here is because if we hold shift and then go to the center of it, we can drag ourselves a nice shape in the center and that keeps it nice and locked as you can see. So as long as you hold shift, it keeps it nice and center and locked on to where we want it to go. Now that you've created yourself a shape, we're going to go back to the first tool and we're going to start off with the image in the middle. So what we're going to use for the image is we're going to use a dumbbell and this is quite simple to create. Once again, you want to go back to the shapes and go to the rectangular tool. But you need to make sure you create yourself a new layer, otherwise it will re-edit the current shape that you have. Now that you've got yourself a new layer, you want to go back to where it says stroke, set this one to none, and then put the fill on a black color. Now that you've done that, you want to left click and drag this out. And then make sure it's not too big, but not too wide at the same time as well. So you can pretty much keep on messing about and then snap it onto the center once you're happy with it. With the new version of Photoshop, you need to keep in mind that it will be on a locked aspect ratio. So if you wanted to make it taller or wider, you would need to hold shift and then that will let you edit it. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's like perfect in the middle. Next up, we're going to create the actual plates itself. So we're going to go with the rounded rectangular tool and then we're going to create ourselves the first one right here. We're going to make it a little bit bigger, so if you press Ctrl and T, and then just make it a little bit bigger. We're probably going to make it a bit wider as well, so if you hold Shift, there we go. Now, because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, I like to put it back to the shape and connect them up. Once it's connected up, I hold Shift and then press the right arrow on the keyboard. So that's one, two, and that's, that's perfect right there. Next up, you want to press Ctrl J. And then you want to press Ctrl T and then scale this one down so it's smaller. And then once again, put it next to this one. 
connect it up and then once again hold shift and then press the right arrow twice and then finally we want to get ourselves the very last plate which is the smallest one and just add that one onto it like so one two there we go the great thing about the next part is you can pretty much copy the plates from this side to the other side so if you hold shift and then click on the bottom one to select all three of them you press ctrl j press ctrl t and then you want to right click on the screen and flip horizontally and then once you've done that you can pretty much slide it over to this side like so and then once again once you've got them all selected press ctrl t and then hold shift and then press the left arrow twice and there we go if you wanted to you can create yourself a folder so we can put these in a folder so they're nice and out of the way we don't have to deal with them at the moment next up is to add some text so this is the easy part all you got to do is go to the text tool make sure it's on a black color and then you want to left click and drag it out and type in some text so you need to also make sure it's a little bit bigger because six pixels is tiny you won't be able to see it so type in text well, we're going to type in text here it's not very creative but we're just going to have to deal with it for now <laughs> so we're going to increase the size a little bit as well Make this a little bit back to normal i'm going to put this to the center if you wanted to you can press ctrl a this will select all of your image and then Go to the first tool and then align it to center like so. Press Ctrl D. We can also add a subtitle if you wanted to. So press Ctrl and J. Hold Shift to move this down. down. Make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to put caps lock on. So subtitle. Ctrl A and then make this one a little bit smaller. We're also going to change the font to Nexalite. Put this back to normal. And then I'm going to press Ctrl A and then we're going to center it and move it down a little bit. The only thing about this is it's not exactly in the center anymore because of the shape. So, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the folder, we're going to click on the top one, select all of these except from the shape, and then we're going to hold Ctrl and select these two. Press Ctrl T, rescale the edges a little bit smaller, and we can pretty much make this into the center. Right, so I'd say about there. And yeah, that is pretty much it. That is a nice, clean, simple logo. You can even invert this if you wanted to. So you can go back to the color and change this into a black color. You can go ahead and right click on this one, blend in options, color overlay, set this one to white, and then same as the text, so color overlay, white. But anyway, I hope this video was helpful in some way. I might do a few more of these because there's so many different types of logos that you can do. This was just the very first one we're gonna start off with. Anyway, I'm gonna go now, so I will see you all in my next video.